Another crazy video, another crazy video by Andrei Bogoslavsky. Oh, why not? I'm having good time. I don't know about you. And I wouldn't want to get up in the morning if the day is not going to be a struggle and joy. The struggle is the nature of organic life. And I have to choose. I'm going to enjoy this or not enjoy this. And throughout my life, I had to learn how to enjoy the shit that happens. Shit happens. I mean, here we go. The hammer is falling on my foot, and I, and I see it falling on my thumb, right? On my toe. And in the process of falling, I can't stop it. It's going to happen. I'm seeing it. I'm looking at it. Consciousness is capable of, uh, of realizing the factor before it actually happens. There's some sort of degree of uh, predictability, human mind. It's a science of linguistics, okay? Uh, and also quantum behavior of, of human mind. Uh, so I know I'm going to be in pain in a second. It takes a second to kick in. And I accept it. As the hammer is falling, before it hit my toe, toe thumbnail, I have to accept it because it's going to happen. I'm going to die. But before I die, I would like to enjoy every minute of my existence. And this is what I do. This is what I record those videos. I really enjoy it. Uh, these paintings, uh, the abstract ones, can be of mine. Uh, cosmology, this is Garden of Eden, they can be exhibited any side up. And this is what we would call interactive, is there a raccoon in this place? Interactive art. Essentially, the art collector can hang it any side up. And they love it because I also write on the back of the paintings. What am I talking about? I was going to tell you about something important. <coughs> This is one of those designs. The world is in my mind. This is original t-shirt from 1989. After I designed this, I started printing it on t-shirts. And this is the original silkscreen. And I cut it by hand out of the special film you buy in our supply store. I still don't know how to make silkscreen screens photographically. It's very easy and I'm sure I could learn it in a day. But I don't need to learn these technical reproductions. I know everything about classical reproduction, about metal plate printing. Uh, I was making woodcuts, and uh, out of very hard wood, you would use woodcut. Uh, uh, cherry tree. So cherry tree, you cut it across the grain and you have this bulk, like a square of the wood, and you take all of these rings and you assemble them and you glue them with bone glue real tight, and it stays like for two days till glue dries, and it's a good glue. Bone glue is, you know, thousands of years, Egyptian pyramids. Doesn't dissolve, doesn't anything. If you add a little damar varnish, like a drop, like 2%, it's not going to dissolve in water after it dries. It's a gelatin. You know, the gelatin you eat with sugar, that's a bone glue. It's, it's extracted from bones after the meat is cut off. You boil the bones for three days. Stinks like hell. In my hometown, there was a bone, not bone, glue, glue factory. So all the bones from the butchers were coming there, and the stench was, fuck, man, right, right? It's Soviet Union. You have to understand, there is no commerce, no business thinking. So they build a fucking glue factory right on the bank of a river Volga. And then they put the most prestigious apartments, apartment buildings right on the bank. And I'm living in those apartments, my parents, right? And there's this stench, fuck. So, what I was talking about, the process of living, minute after minute, second after second, it's a struggle. Universe uh, needs to push, 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 
to go further, to create time and space. It stretches time and it creates more space by creating also atoms. So as space uh, and time are stretching, they're pulling behind necessary creation of new new matter. New particles are being created from the quantum vibrations, from quantum waves. So we don't know where the matter comes from. We don't know how the atoms are being created like today. They're created new atoms. Yeah, yeah, uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen and helium are primordial, the biggest atoms, and out of them, you know, uh, we get those other atoms, which have more electrons rotating. What the fuck am I talking about? So every second of my life uh, has to resemble the functions of the universe, otherwise it's not karma yoga. The concept of karma yoga is 7,000 years old, and it's from Hinduism. And this is where sages, by meditations, by hundreds of years, you know, those guys, they sit in a bamboo jungle, they eat shit, literally, they eat like shit. They cover themselves with dirt or sometimes cow shit. Yeah, cow shit in India. And he's sitting there and people, villagers bring him food. Well, sometimes they don't bring him food and he doesn't care. So after sitting for an hour or two in meditation, trying to uh, get on the road of his karma yoga. If you are not on the road of your karma yoga, if you are not doing your destiny, what God wants you to do, you will have to be reborn again and suffer the same shit you're suffering here. Because you didn't solve your destiny. You didn't... <laughs> You didn't do what God wants you to do. Every human being has a function in this big mechanism in our you know, society. That's one thing. That's one thing. Uh, you became a lawyer, a doctor, a taxi driver. Uh, but the question for you, for me, me personally, I'm sharing my mind, is am I on the road of my destiny? Is this what God wants me to do? Or this is an illusion that I talk myself into? And my other teachers throughout my high school were telling me, you are born to do great things. And I was into linguistics and recitation on stage, which is theater. This is why I can act better than any Hollywood idiot. And they know that because I know them. And uh, they actually called me to get tips on um, stand-up comedians. I have two friends, one in New York, one in Hollywood. So, is this my karma yoga? Is every breath I take in, in coordination with the universe? Because that's what destiny is. Even, even when I, if I get hit by a car, water is boiling get hit by a car, it is also my destiny that I'll have to deal with the, you know, with the circumstances after the accident, you know, being crippled or something. And as you see people around who are recovering from horrible situation, circumstances, people recover from cancer, people, you know, they overcome those, those life-threatening conditions. So when your life is really threatened, you learn something. That moment, the guy loaded the gun and pointed that, that sculptor, upstate New York, 20 years ago. I came to realize something in that one split second. That my life is in the hands of God. I trust God totally, but I need to tie up my camel. Because the guy, some, the next guy is, will pull the trigger. This guy didn't pull the trigger, but the next guy loaded the gun, but didn't pull the trigger. The next guy might pull the trigger, right? And I don't want to deprive citizens of Earth of beautiful artwork that will be created in the years to come. Okay? So that's my purpose in life. This is my karma yoga. So, regardless, as it says in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, regardless of your 
circumstances, not having money. And, you know, I have kids coming on me on Instagram saying, I'm so fucking broke. I'm in college. I would love to paint again. There's no excuses not to be on the road of your karma yoga. The only excuses are procrastination, fear, fear. You might be afraid to say how you feel in painting, in drawing, or even in speech. I'm not afraid of shit, but it's a big obstacle because I got in trouble in the United States 16 times I was arrested because I'm not afraid of anybody or anything. And it's, it's hard to live like that. It's hard. So what the fuck am I talking about? Destiny and karma yoga. Well, I, I guess I'll need to make another episode because my water is boiling, okay?